it's a scripture, but it's not. The Bible says God cannot be tempted, neither tempteth he any man, but will with every temptation make a way of escape. God's not the one that's putting it on you. Yes, sir. The devil's the one that's putting it on you. God's the one that'll get you through it. We need to quit saying God won't put more on us because that's obvious. God's not putting it on there to begin with. Exactly. Amen. Get it straight. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> now here's the thing. The disciples were in storms that God didn't send. What kind of storms were they? They were windy storms. The wind was stirring up the water. Jesus... They woke him up. See, the devil's trying to kill Jesus before he could get to the cross. He'd already tried many other ways. Tried to kill him when he was a baby. Mm -hmm. He was still trying to kill him. So he couldn't go to the cross and, be, and win the victory. That storm came to kill Jesus and the disciples too. They woke Jesus up. And the Bible says he rebuked the wind. Amen. Rebuke the wind. Listen, because it was an unruly wind that was started by unruly spirits. He rebuked the wind and said, Peace be still to the water. But once the wind died down, the waters were going to get peaceful. Hello. Yes, sir. We need to understand where trouble comes from sometimes. Well, yeah. all the time, quite yeah. frankly. Yeah. Man of God got discouraged. Men of God do that sometimes. This man, his name was Elijah. And Elijah had called fire from heaven, raised the dead, prophesied, just brought rain from heaven to quench the thirsty ground after three and a half years of drought. I mean, this man, this man was a powerful prophet. Amen. But after the fire fell on Carmel and the storm came, Jezebel got angry. Not Ahab, Jezebel. My Bible tells me on various occasions, you can look this up, it's in your Bible too, that she kept Ahab stirred up. Yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. what a stormy wind does to the water. It stirs it up. Yes, Hello. She, did. Yes, she, did. she kept him stirred up. Yes, she well, did. here's the thing. She became angry and she sent a message to, to uh, Elijah. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> By this time tomorrow, the same thing going to happen to you that you did to my 850 prophets. Yes, sir. They were all dead. Yes, sir. Elijah was tired. Sometimes, and I can tell you this by experience, the greatest trials that comes on a preacher is right after he steps out of the pulpit having preached one of the greatest messages he's ever preached. That's when the devil jumps on him with both feet. I can tell you, I know this is true. I've seen it happen many times. But here's the thing. This woman, woman, gave him a threat. And he was tired. The Bible says he ran for his life. That's what it says. And he went out and found an old juniper tree. Juniper tree was what they made brooms out of to sweep the yard with. It was a broom tree. And he sat there in his discouragement and he said, It's enough, Lord. I'm not better than my father's. Let me die. He despaired of life. After a great victory. The Bible says that he fell asleep from exhaustion, I guess. And when he awakened, there was a fire burning. And there was food cooked, and there was water from the brook. And an angel was there. And the angel said, rise and eat. 
he was hungry, boy. He went over there and got something to eat, got some of that water. And he came back over and got in that juniper tree and fell asleep again. Slept on a while. Then he woke up again. The angel was still there with something else to eat and drink. He gets up, and the angel says, you need to eat this now and drink this because the journey is too great for thee. May I say to you, the journey is too great for all of us. Yeah. On your own strength, you cannot make it. Without God's help, none of us would be worth a plug nickel. That's right. He ate it and drank it. The Bible says that he went in the strength of that meat for 40 days and 40 nights and climbed a mountain when he got to the end of the journey, a mountain called Horeb. Went up, found a cave, went in that cave. All of a sudden, everything started getting tore up. The fire came, an earthquake came, and then a strong wind, a rock-breaking wind. Bible says God was not in that wind, or he, he wasn't in the earthquake, and he wasn't in that fire. See, I tell you, Satan's a counterfeiter. You gotta, you gotta have a little discernment to know what's not God. So, the Bible says that uh, he just kept his peace, stayed in the cave, and all of a sudden he sensed God was afoot. And he stepped out to the opening of the cave and he heard the sound of the whisper of God. That's what a still small voice is. It's a whisper. It's a calm, cool, collected voice. Hey, Elijah, what are you doing? God knew what he was doing there, but he wanted this man to state his case. I'm the only prophet left. They seek my life to take it, da-da-da. God says, I've got work for you. He said, i got three things I want you to do. And he was, all of it was to anoint three different people. He left that cave and went on his assignment. God didn't say, okay, I know you're tired and I know you're weary and I know you're suicidal, so I'm just going to go ahead and take you. No. He put him on assignment. Yes, sir. God will put you back in the saddle, y'all. Yes. He'll pick you up and dust you off and put you back in the race. Yes, sir. He went, and for the next 13 years, he did miracles, and signs, and wonders, and anointings that God told him to do. And one of those things was anointed his replacement, Elijah. Because now he's old, he's in his 80s. God's going to grant him the opportunity to come home, and he did. But I want to say to you that he went there because he learned how to recognize what wind was God and what wasn't. God didn't come like a boisterous wind in that situation. He came like the wind of a breath, like Adam got in the garden. A still small voice on the breath of God. And this man recognized The Bible says in Ephesians, be wise, be observant, be discerning, because if you're not, you'll be tossed about by every wind of doctrine. And then he goes on to talk about doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. Those are winds of a certain kind. Now, 
I'm going to change up just a little bit because I've laid some groundwork. There's good wind. There's bad wind. It takes discernment to know what's God and what's not. In the last several years, many years, there has been injustice, especially in this country, upon the black race. Injustices. I don't have to go into detail. You're aware. You know. All kinds of injustices. Economic injustices. Prejudicial injustices. Slavery injustices. Injustices that have hurt and wounded and separated black families. And I think God has said enough. Yes. Now get me wrong, don't get me right. I do not condone riots. I do not condone destruction. It's the thief that comes to kill and steal and destroy. That's not God. But neither do I condone a badge and a uniform doing unlawful things. Now here we go. The black people have suffered three times more deaths through the COVID virus than white people. Now, whites didn't do that, I don't think. I don't know how they could have. They don't even know what this thing is. But somebody did it. And I think it was the devil. And then we come to this place where this man, who's not an innocent man, but he certainly didn't deserve to die named George Floyd. And the nation watched in horror as policemen put his knee on his neck and kept it there till he died. I later found out that there were some personal things going on between those two men as part of the history. I mean, I'm just saying there's usually roots to things. Now here, here, here's what I want to say to you. With things like that going on, the injustices, the COVID deaths, this latest tip of the iceberg with this black man being killed by a police officer. Why is the devil doing all that? Huh? That's one thing to keep us divided. But I think he's afraid. Yeah. I really think he's afraid. I think he's running scared. I think he's desperate. Can you handle a little truth? Mm -hmm. Uh oh, look out now. Bring it on. Look out. This week, my eye, my left eye, I woke up, don't know what day it was, Monday, Tuesday. My eye was matted together. I couldn't even open my eye, and it was swollen. And for the next couple of days, actually even through yesterday, uh, I've had problems with my left eye. I would have to constantly uh, wet a, a cloth and, and maybe hold it on my eye for a little bit. My eye almost, one morning I woke up, my eye was almost swollen short, shut up. You know, I got enough problems. I don't need any more. What's going on with this? Lord, just heal me. And God started reminding me of some things. In 1906, there was a one-eyed black preacher from Louisiana 
who went to Los Angeles, California and started a revival. It was a little church on a place they called Azusa Street. In this revival, a deep move of God took place. It was the Holy Ghost at work. It quickly spread across the nation. It was a Pentecostal outpouring Amen. that later became known as the Charismatic Movement. And to this date, in 2020, there have been more than 700,000 people baptized in the Holy Ghost Amen. out of this charismatic move of God. A one-eyed black man from Louisiana. That's where it started. Not that he was all that. He was a vessel. When I woke up with my eye the Lord reminded me <laughs> of this. That revival was the greatest move of outpouring of the Spirit since the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts. There's not been a greater one. Let me read you. Let me read you something from the book of Job, or rather from the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2 is prophecy, and as you know, Joel is where the Pentecost was prophesied. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yes, sir. The old men shall dream dreams, your yes, young sir. men shall see visions. Upon your servants and your handmaidens I'll pour out my spirit. I pour my spirit out on yes, all sir. flesh. He didn't say black flesh, or white flesh, or yellow flesh, or red flesh, or brown flesh. He said all flesh. All flesh. That's how God views us. Yes, sir. Joel chapter 2, verse 20. I'm going to read this paraphrase to you from uh, about 21 through 27 verses there. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, but be glad, ye children of Zion. Mm -hmm. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. Mm -hmm. But he will cause to come down for you both the former and the latter rain yes, sir. in the first month. Yes, sir. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore unto you the years that the locust and the cankerworm hath eaten. Yes, sir. And you shall eat in plenty yes, sir. and be satisfied. And ye shall praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall not be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst. Yes, sir. This is a prophecy that is given right along there with the outpouring of the Spirit and the analogy is given as a pouring out of rain Amen. for harvest. Yes, sir. A former Amen. early rain and a latter rain. Now I want to say to you that I believe that there are three rains. I believe the former rain was the one on the day of Pentecost. That was the first rain, the outpouring. Yes, the second rain, I believe, began around 1900 in a charismatic outpouring where all these hundreds of thousands of people have been baptized in that spiritual outpouring. That was the latter rain. But in this prophecy, we are told that God's going to take the, the two rains 
and put them together. Pour them out. And I, I believe that's the third reign. You see, God is the triune God, and I firmly believe in the third dimensional things. And I believe God's going to take the Pentecostal first move and the Pentecostal second move, and He's going to combine them together, and we're going to have a frog strangling, gully washing, outpouring rain of the Holy Spirit. That's going to shake this world and move things out of place. Yeah. Amen. And it's going to shake the devil to his yeah. shoe straps. Yeah. I tell you, he's scared. I think he's got enough to understand and sense yeah. that something big yeah. is in the making. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I think that the signs point to the fact that we're in the last days Amen. and the black oppression yes. or the black people that have been oppressed have had enough. Mm -hmm. And I think the white folks have too, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Yep. All God's children yes. along with God are saying it's enough. That's yes. right, mm -hmm. that's right, that's right. Now, once again, I'm not condoning the, the path that some have taken to show their displeasure. I don't, take, I don't believe that's the way to go at all. Amen. Just like I don't believe that policeman was in, in God's plan at all. I don't think that was God Amen. at all. Amen. So I'm saying to you, I believe God's got something big and I don't think we ought to miss yeah. it. I think things are building toward it. Yes, yes. I think that, 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 that the Word of God it, it, it has pointed like a signpost and a finger pointing. Look, yes, yes. look, it's coming, it's coming. Yes. Remember, last week, those of you were, that were here last week, I, I, I talked to you about Job and how Job was trying to understand why all the trouble had come his way. God showed up and started asking him questions and this and that. And ultimately, if you understand, God pointed out to Job that I'm not your problem. Sure. Leviathan is your problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The snake is your problem. Yes, sir. He was your problem with your forefather Adam. He's been your problem all along. That's where your problem is. The snake is your problem. Yes, sir. And may I say to you today, the snake is the problem. Yes, He's behind the trouble. Yes. He's behind the stir. Yes. He's behind the violence. He's behind the sickness and disease. Yes. He's behind the death. Yes. 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 He's behind the lawlessness. Yes, sir. His winds have been blowing yes, and stirring up the waters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Enough. Yes. Enough. Yes, Lord. Enough. Yes, Lord. In Isaiah chapter 27, verse 21, I want to give you a prophecy. In that day, what day, Lord? Last day. In that day, the Lord with His great and strong sword. What is the Lord's great and strong sword? Word. His Word. Yes, sir. In that day, the Lord with His great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, yes, that crooked serpent, yes, and He shall slay the dragon yes, that is in the sea. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe that we're seeing the beginnings of this prophecy come to pass. Isn't it interesting to you that this Leviathan, this dragon, this serpent, this snake, this devil, isn't it interesting to you that China's sacred symbol is a dragon. Amen. Amen. 
Isn't it interesting that the plague began over there where the dragon is revered? Amen. Now, I'm not speaking ill of the Chinese people. I think some of the best people on the planet are Chinese people. They're in an underground church because the government will not tolerate them on the surface. But I want to say to you, it's an evil government. It's a godless government. And I think God has said it's enough. They've caused more trouble than any of us could possibly know. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Now listen, I want to tell you something that sort of ties these things together. When the coronavirus struck from that serpent, what was the what was the complaint? I can't breathe. Ah, look at him now. When the snake struck up in Minnesota and a black man unjustly died. What was his complaint? I can't, I can't breathe. breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. What are what are the spirits likened unto wind? Amen. Breath. Amen. I want to tell you, there's a there's a war of winds. Now listen. Back in the 60s, the late 60s, and I've shared this with you. Those of you who will remember, you'll remember I shared this with you. It was on a Wednesday, I remember the day. I had taught school that day, and I'd driven home. And I came home, and I, was, I had such a, a horrific headache that I couldn't see. My eyes were watering. Tears were dripping. I just, I, I, I was incapacitated. It was more than just a headache. It was an oppressive thing. I laid down across the bed. I normally would have gone to church on Wednesday night, but I could not go that night. I was lying there, and as I was lying there, I saw myself in a vision. It was a white background. Everything was white. I think I was even wearing white. And I saw in a, in, in, in a short distance away a huge, like a python-like serpent slithering toward me. You remember me telling you this? Yes, I remember. And he slithered toward me, toward me. And he, and I couldn't, I couldn't get away. I yes. couldn't, I couldn't move. Yes. And he started wrapping around my ankles and he started yes. twining. Yes. And as he moved, he would tighten and Boy, the power of that thing was unimaginable. Yes. And he got up to my chest. Yes, Lord. And tightened. Boy, and I was struggling to breathe. Struggling yes, sir. to breathe. Yes, sir. God brought all this back to my remembrance today. Yes. Or this week. And uh, he was headed on up around my my neck, and I I said, Lord, I, this is it. Is this? It? Is this it? Or am I am I dying? Is this is this the way it's going to happen? Because I couldn't breathe, and I, in my desperation, I said, "That's it, Lord. I surrender. I surrender." When I did that, that serpent said, "Just released." began to untwine backwards. And with every inch he got further away, the pain in my head got further away. Until finally he left me completely and went out of sight and I was completely and totally well. I had no pain whatsoever. It was, it, he took it, it. It was gone. He had the headache then. <laughs> This is interesting to me because that, I believe, was the Leviathan example that the Lord showed me years ago that I've never really understood 
until maybe now. I couldn't breathe. That seems to be the situation, the scenario in this time. A battle for the breath. Remember, that's what God breathed into us to begin with. And it's like the snake is trying to just squeeze it out of us. Blacks and whites and reds and yellows and all kinds of people. In Jeremiah, or rather in Ezekiel 37, death, 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 death everywhere. Death, death, valley full of death. What was God's solution? Son of man? Yes, sir. His bones live? Yes, sir. Prophesy to the wind. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't think these are accidents. I think God's trying to tell us something. Yeah. Prophesy to the wind yes, and say, O oh, breath. Wind? Breath? Well, is it a wind or a breath, Lord? And the Lord said, Yes. Prophesy to the wind and say, O breath, o breath, blow from these dead bones. Yes, Lord. And that prophecy started the wind to blow it. And the wind began to shake. And those bones began to assemble. In just a matter of a short time, those bones stood up an exceeding great army Amen. that was started by the wind. Amen. Amen. I believe it's a Pentecostal wind. Amen. I believe it's a life-giving breath, a heavenly wind, a Amen. heavenly breath of God Amen. that is coming to deal with with the death wind. Amen. The life wind is coming to deal with the death wind. Amen. Amen. And life will trump death every time. Amen. 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 Now I want to read to you another scripture and I'm drawing to a close. Luke 10, 17 and 18. And the 70 returned again with joy and said to the Lord, yes, sir. Even the devils are subject unto yes, us through thy yes, name. Yes, sir. And Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Yes, sir. Then the next thing he said was, Behold, I give you power yes, to tread on serpents. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir.